Okay, so yesterday we talked about um, doing a two-step equation. Now today we're going to get a little more tricky and we are going to do a multi-step equation, which means more than one. Okay, so sorry, this is 7.2 multi-step, oops, sorry, ah. multi-step equation. Okay, so review is 1, if we had 2x plus 4 plus 3x, I could add 2x and 3x to get 5x plus 4. Okay, and typically when we write our answer, we want the variables to come first, then our second one. Uh, something I also want to talk about is, remember, when we're doing variables, we have to take the operation that comes before that number or that term. Okay, so let's try a second one. 5y plus y, we can add these two together because they have the same variable and same exponent. So if I added 5y and y, I would get 6y's, okay? We're just adding the numbers that are in front of it. So remember when we just have a y, there's an invisible one in front of it. So that means we're just adding 5 plus 1, and then don't forget your y. Okay, uh, let's try a couple more review problems. I've got the third one. It says 8a minus 5a. Okay, because they both have an a and that a is not squared or whatever, we can combine them. It's called combining like terms. So 8 minus 5 is 3, so my answer would be 3a. Not 3a squared, not 3a whatever, it's just 3a's. Okay, if I had 8a's, I took away 5a's, then I'd be left with 3a's. Okay, let's do a couple more review. If I have 5c plus 2 minus 4c, this is where it really comes in because I have my 5c and I have my minus 4c. I'm not going to add, I have to subtract that. Okay, so if I do 5c minus 4c, then I would be left with 1c, or just a regular old c, plus 2. Okay, I have to make sure when I'm looking at my terms, I am looking at the very, or the operation that is in front of it. I'm looking at that term, that number, and the operation in front of it. So just like if I had 7 plus c minus 3, I would have to do 7 minus 3. Okay, so 7 minus 3 it would be 4 plus c is how I would write that one. Okay, let's do last review problem. 4x plus 3 minus 2, parenthesis, 5 plus x. Okay, follow me here. This is not a positive 2, because if I did my little trick where I look at what's in front of it, it is really a negative 2. Okay, so I'm going to change my positive to a negative, then I don't really have to worry too much. Okay, because if I'm adding a negative or if I'm subtracting, I'm doing exactly the same thing. So minus 2 and plus a negative 2 are exactly the same concept. Okay, there's one negative sign, and there's, well, it's kind of, because this would be like minus a positive 2, okay? Uh, so there's one negative, one positive sign. So I just want you to know that that means the same thing. If I'm subtracting a positive or if I'm adding a negative, same thing, because we have one negative sign. Okay, so I need to distribute, remember a distributive property, that negative 2 to the 5, okay? So negative 2 times 5, bring down my adding sign, plus negative 2 times x. Then I bring down my plus, my 3, plus 4x. Okay, now I'm going to do my follow, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, from left to right, from left to right. Okay, if I multiplied those two together, I would get a negative 10 
plus negative 2x plus 3 plus 4x. Okay, so I've got my 4x and my minus 2x. Okay, so 4x minus 2x would be 2x. Then I have a positive 3 and a negative 10. So 3, if I have $3 to my name, but I owe somebody $10, okay, so I have 3, I can give them 3, and I'd say, hey, I'm sorry, I still owe you $7, so I still owe $7, though, because I can't pay you everything. I only have $3. I know I owe you $10. I'll pay you back later. Okay, so I combined my like terms. Why did I combine the, seven, the 3 and the negative 10? because they don't have variables. So I can add a three and a 10, okay? Why did I combine the four X and the negative two X? Because they both had an X and that X, I mean, you cannot add an X squared plus X. Does not work. They have to have the same variable and the same exponents. Okay, now that we got our review out of the way, we get to start some new stuff. Okay, so solving multi-step equations, we have two kind of steps we have to follow. First, we are going to simplify each side of the equation. And again, when I'm talking each side, I'm talking each side of the equal sign. Okay, so I have to simplify the left side of the equal sign, then the right side of the equal sign. And we need to simplify them completely. Okay, using, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Okay, then we are going to solve it using reverse PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Or the order of operations if we wanted to call it by its true name. Okay, so let's just do a little example here. Let's say I have a problem that says x plus 3x plus 5 equals 41. Well, here's the deal. x, x, there you have the same exponents of 1. So that means I can add them together. If I have 1x and I'm going to add 3x's to my 1x, I'm going to have 4x plus 5 equals 41. Okay, now on the right side, there's nothing else we can do to 41. It's already done. Is there anything else we can do to the left side? No, there isn't because we are done. We don't have any more like terms. So now I can solve using reverse, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, or, or order of operations. So I'm going to do my opposite or my inverse operation and subtract 5 from both sides. Okay, 41 minus 5 would be 36 equals, okay, I'm bringing down that equal sign. That would be 0. Okay, so I'm going to do 4x equals 36. Okay, now I just need to divide both sides by 4, and I would get x equals 36 divided by 4 is 9, so x equals 9. Okay, so we just, what it, this means is simplifying, it just means combine all your like terms. All of your x's, all of your just regular old numbers, we're going to combine them so we can see everything much easier. Okay, let's try a couple more. Okay, so for number two, we are going to do three times the quantity of 2n minus 7 equals 9. Okay, I have to use the distributive property first because 2n minus 7, there's nothing I can do in there. There's nothing more because they're not like terms. Okay, so I'm going to distribute that 3 times 2n bring down my subtraction sign, do 3 times 7 equals 9. Okay, 3 times 2n would be 6n minus 21 equals 9. Okay, so now I'm doing reverse, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, 
and I'm going to add 21 to both sides. Okay, 21 plus 9 would get me to 30 equals negative 21 plus 21 would get me to 0. Okay, so I'm left with 6n. If I divide both sides by 6, I would get n equals 5. Again, you guys, if you're ever concerned, God, did I do that right? Just plug it in. If I do 3 times the quantity of 2 times 5, remember whenever we plug in a number, we have to put it in parentheses, minus 7 equals 9. Well, this would be 10 minus 7 equals 9. 10 minus 7 is 3 times 3 equals 9. 9 equals 9. It checks out. Okay, if you're ever concerned, like on a test or your homework, God, did I get the right answer? You just plug it in. And you can check your work. You can know you're right because you checked your work. Okay, let's try number three. 7 minus y plus 5y equals 9. Okay, again, don't forget to circle the operation in front of the variable. Okay, so I've got negative y plus a 5y. Remember, I can just write that as 5y minus y. Okay, that's much easier to think of than, okay, I have 5y, but I have to give one away. Well, that's kind of easy too. Okay, so I'd be left with 4y plus 7. Why would it be a plus? Because your 4y is a positive. Okay, if I had this right here is a positive 4y. It's not a negative. If it were a negative, we would be subtracting. But it is a positive. Okay, so now I'm going to subtract 7. It was 9, sorry. I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides and get 4y equals 2. Okay, then I'm going to divide both sides by 4, and I'm going to get y equals 2 divided by 4. Please, you guys, do not tell me this is 2. 2 divided by 4. I can reduce and get y equals 1 half. Do not flip those around. We always, like I've told you, we always start with the number that's already there. The 2 is already there. We're just dividing that 2 by 4 to get our answer of y equals 1 half. Okay, now we get to do the fun stuff here. You guys are going to love this one. 1 sixth times the quantity of y plus 42 minus 15 Holy smokes. Okay, this is what I was talking about last year when I said you're not going to be able to look at it and just solve it. Okay, we're, at, we're to that point now. Equals negative 3. Okay, here we go. First, I'm going to distribute because when we're distributing, we're multiplying. Okay, so when I'm multiplying, I'm going to do that before adding and subtracting. Okay, so I'm going to have 1 sixth y plus... 1 sixth times 42 minus 15 equals negative 3. Okay, what is 42 times 1 sixth? Well, it's 42 divided by 6. That'd be 7 minus 15 plus 1 sixth y. What could I do next? I can't add 1 sixth y and 7, so I'm going to do this next. Got a positive 7 minus 15. So if I have $7, but I owe you $15, okay, here's my $7. Sorry, I still owe you 8. I have 1 sixth y over here equals negative 3. Okay, so in order to get rid of my 8, I'm going to add 8 to both sides. And I'm going to be left with 1 sixth y on the left side. I have $8, but I owe you $3. I'm left with 5 I can pay you up this time. Finally, I have enough money to pay you. Whew. Okay, now I'm going to divide both sides by 1 sixth. Divide by 1 sixth. So I have the number 5 divided by 1 sixth. Really, I'm doing 5 times the reciprocal of 1 sixth, or 5 times 6. And so I would get 30. So to write my answer, I would just write y equals 30. 
Can I check my answer to make sure I did that right? Would I recommend it for this? Absolutely, of course, because this is a lot of work. Okay, so what you would do is you would, yeah, let me move my handy dandy work over here. I've got one sixth times uh, 30, these are my parentheses, sorry, plus 42 minus 15. Okay, 30 plus 42 would be 72 times one sixth uh, minus 15. Okay, what's 72 divided by, okay, well, I'll do it the right way, sorry. Got to catch myself sometimes, you guys. Okay, so if I do 72 times 1 sixth, really what I'm doing is 72, 72 divided by 6. Okay, so 72 divided by 6 goes in there once. I'm left with 1, 12, 6 goes into 12 two times. So 12 minus 15, does it equal negative 3? Well, if I have $12, but I owe you $15, well, I don't have enough money to pay you. God darn it, I don't have enough money again. I still will owe you $3. Checks out. We did it right. Okay, let's do one more problem. This one will be a little bit easier, okay? All right, problem number five. Nine minus three times the quantity of n minus five equals 30. Again, don't let this trick you. Don't distribute a positive three, you guys. We have to dis distribute that negative three. Okay, so I'm gonna do negative three times n minus negative three times five equals 30. Don't forget to add your nine. Or really, we can just have our nine minus. Okay, so if I do negative three times n, I get negative three n, put my nine up front. A negative times a negative is always gonna get me a positive, so I'm adding 15 equals 30. Okay, so nine plus 15, well, nine plus 15 would be 24, positive 24, and then I've got a negative three N equals 30. Okay, so if I minus 24 from both sides, I would be left with six on the right side negative three n on the left side. Okay, so if I divide both sides by a negative three, divide by a negative three, I would get n equals a negative two. I can go back and check my work. Let's see, nine minus three times the quantity of negative two minus five equals 30. So if I owe you $2 and I owe her $5, I owe seven dollars, negative three, and then we've got our nine equals 30, okay. So if I did negative three times a negative seven, I'd get 21 plus nine equals three. All right, I forgot my 30. I thought it was three and I thought I did the problem wrong. <laughs> So 9 plus 21 is 30, equals 30. Answer checks out. We're good to go. All right. Now I was hoping that would be it, but we just have a little bit down here, a little bit more to add. Okay, now we're talking consecutive integers. Okay. I guess we have to do a few more. Okay. First one we are going to do says, there we go. Find three consecutive integers whose sum is 51. When we're talking consecutive, it means in a row. So it'll be like one, two, three five, six, seven. 
11, 12, 13, okay? It's numbers that come after each other. And integers are those whole numbers. So we're not dealing fractions. We're not dealing decimals. We're dealing whole numbers, okay? So think of a book. I want to find three pages of a book that could add up to the number of 51, okay? So here is your trick. Remember this one, you guys. This will be so helpful for you, okay? So I have the first number plus that first number plus 1 plus that first number plus 2 is going to equal 51. Okay, so let's say n is 1. This would be 1, n plus 1 would be 2, n plus 2 would be 3. Okay, so we're just putting, we're just making a formula, a pattern that we could use to figure this one out. Okay, so now I have to figure out what n is. Combine my like terms. Can't do n plus 1, can't do n plus 2. But what I can do is I can add n plus n plus n. So I would get 3n plus 3 equals 51. Okay, so now what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to add, or sorry, subtract 3 from both sides. 51 minus 3, and 48. 3n equals 48. Okay, so now I'm going to divide both sides by 3, divide both sides by 3, 48 divided by 3, 1, 3 goes in, 6 goes in there, okay, so n equals 16. Did that answer it though? I need to find three consecutive numbers, not one, but I know my first number is 16, so if I know my first number is 16, can I figure out my next ones? 16, 17, 18. Let's add them up to make sure they add up to 51. Okay, uh, put a box around it so I don't get lost. That's my answer. Okay, so if I did 16 plus 17, I'd get 6 plus 7 is 13. 33, so if I did 33 plus 18, 8, 9, 10, 11, 3, 4, 5, 51. Okay, they do add up to 51. We solved it. It wasn't guess and check. It was following a formula that will work for you every single time you come a problem like this. Come to a problem like this. Let's try another one. Okay, now this time we have to find four consecutive integers. Ah, messy. Okay, who is sum? is 30. Okay, so I have to do n, my first page, plus n plus 1, my second page, plus n plus 2, my third page. How many pages do I need? 4 plus n plus 3. And it's going to equal 30. Okay, so let's add all my n's. 1, 2, 3, 4 n's. So I have 4 n's plus 1 plus 2 plus 3, 6, equals 30. Okay, so subtract 6 from both sides. I'd be left with 4n on the left side. 30 minus 6 is 24. Okay, so divide both sides by 4. Divide by 4, 24. Divided by 4, well, I guess I can just do that in my head. That would be 6. So the first page number is 6. That would be 7. 8, 9, okay, let's make sure they add up to the numbers they're supposed to add up to. 6 plus 7 is 13, 8 plus 9 is 17, 13 plus 17, 7, 8, 9, 10, 30, bing, 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 bing. We solved it. I didn't have to guess and check. I could just figure it out because I know we've had ones like this before where I said guess and check. Now we have a formula to use to make sure we did it. So again, this is our first page number, our second, third, fourth. We just have to do this as many times as it tells us in the directions how many consecutive integers we have. Okay, I apologize. I know this video is a little bit longer than the last couple have been. I've been trying to make them go a little bit faster. So thank you for watching and have an awesome day.